everybody, Tim here with special co-host Low Belly, just kind of hanging out below the scenes. We are here for the last Rebels review, and it's kind of sad. Was it sad? Yeah. And, I don't know, it's, it's bittersweet, because, like I've said before, I feel like the show peaked way too early. Season 2 was some of the greatest television, and, like, season 3 was okay, and season 4 just got too much into like the loath wolves and the cats and the force and stuff like that and i don't know it was a little bit harder for me to get into it i think maybe they they well they did know that this was going to be going to be the end so they wanted to tie it up a certain way when realistically this show easily could have kept going like i would have loved to have actually incorporated more of like a new hope into the show like bring in luke let's see the whole like death battle or death star battle in this show. I think it could have been great. So anyways, uh, the last five episodes, episode 11, Doom, like it's very kind of sad where we see like, oh, uh, Price is given the, the lightsaber. It's like, oh, the Jedi is dead. Well, to cover up her mistake, throw in a parade, we see the wolves attack, and then the giant loath wolf, the I am Doom, with the forehead marking of Kanan's like armor plate. So I was like, oh, it's a little bit heavy. But whatever. Uh, Wolves in the Door. Malcolm McDowell shows up, which is great. Fantastic actor. Everything from like Easy A, Clockwork Orange, Star Trek Generations. Um, so that was great to hear his voice. Which, so they kind of bring in the father, the son, and the daughter. Characters that we have met in Clone Wars. Which realistically, I've seen this before, but I think the first time I saw it, I had completely forgotten about those characters in Clone Wars. But now that I'm binging it so quickly, it kind of, like, now the memories are fresh. So I liked that, and the whole moving art with the wolves thing. And this is, for me, where I could tell that it was getting to be a little too much. I was like, what, what exactly is happening right now? world between worlds where Ezra's walking it's a great film like film style technique layout set whatever you call it I don't know I don't make movies or shows but where he's just walking on the bridges it looked gorgeous like I really really liked that and then you can hear all of the voices of the past everything from Alec Guinness to Yoda to even Leia being like you're my only hope all sorts of stuff and then finally we see Ezra, or Ezra sees Ahsoka's battle with Darth Vader, and he saves her. I'm going to be honest, I don't like it. Because um, now we got like time travel going on in this series, where Ahsoka's now kind of brought into the present, and she was saved. Like, I don't know, as you watch Star Wars throughout the years, they keep adding new things to the Force. Like, in the original trilogy, it was pretty basic. I mean, the Force was almost just, like, telepathy with, like, telekineticness. But, like, they keep adding more. Now we have healing, and now we have projection, and we have all sorts of stuff. And they just kind of keep adding stuff to it. Time travel is a little bit too much for me. That Ahsoka is now like a year forward in the future. So, I don't know. It kind of, Maybe I read it wrong. Maybe that's not what's actually happening. But that it really kind of bugged me. So, we get that. We learn all about why Ezra can't save Kanan. Because if he does, then Kanan will... Or because as if ezra saves kanan then ezra and the rest of the crew will die because they'll be engulfed by the flames so it's kind of a stalemate like you just you can't save him it's it's like the whole it's almost like the time machine thing like you you can't he couldn't save his wife because if he did he would never build the time machine so it creates a paradox type situation why the emperor is in this i don't know like i don't understand and it just seemed really weird and really kind of forced i i didn't like it Fool's Hope, we see Rex in camo gear, which everybody thinks he is the character from Indoor, but that's supposed to be like Nick, Nick Sant or something, and who has his own backstory, but maybe it is, maybe Rex changed his name to Nick, who knows, but it is kind of a nice little like, is this him, is that a little shout out, what's going on, who knows. We see Wolf and Gregor again, which honestly, I kind of forgot that they were around, which I don't know why we haven't been seeing them the entire time. 
I, I honestly don't remember if they gave a reason why they were staying behind. Especially Wolf. Like, Wolf and Rex were both major characters. Gregor was in one episode, so I don't really care. But still, uh, we also see Hondo and Ketsu show up again. So it's like this big little reunion. And Ryder faking that he's going to turn everybody in. Uh, I love the wolf pack scene. But um, basically, it's just this big setup to capture Price. So it, it's kind of cool. Um, and then finally, the finale, the double part, so it could be episode 15, 16, I consider it just an hour-long 15, family reunion and farewell. Like I said, super bittersweet. I'm really sad it's over. I would, I'd be lying if I said I didn't tear up a little bit, but you know, even shows I hate, like series finales always get to me for some reason. I don't even know why. But uh, capture, they captured Price to kind of use her to get into the base, and then... So we see the Emperor again, but now it's just like Palpatine. Like, he doesn't have the scars or anything. And it's like, what's, what's, like, why even project that version of yourself? It didn't really make sense. Gregor's killed, the Assassin's killed, and it's like, okay, so everybody's just dying at this point. We got it. As soon as the Space Whale showed up, if you guys have watched any of the other shows I've done, Star Trek, anything... I hate space whales. I don't know why space whales have to be in everything. Like, it, they should have stopped with whales in space, like, right at, like, Star Trek Four. Because after that, space whales have always been terrible. Ezra capturing Thrawn and going into hyperspace to who knows. And then they actually have, like, a little, like, not quite an epilogue, but, like, a here's what happened where they mention indoor and stuff like that. And again, like I said, this series could have gone on for a couple more seasons. Like let's see some of those battles, but we don't. And so, uh, Jason Sandula, like seriously, I don't know. It's, it's one of those things. So I'm going to give some Firefly spo spoilers. So if you love Firefly, you might want to cover your ears or it's been nice with the review. Thanks. Bye. But anytime the husband dies, the wife is, um, like, instantly pregnant, and that's how they continue the story. Like, it took us four years just to see Hera and Kanan kiss, and sure enough, now she's pregnant with this little green-haired kid. I mean, it's just like in Firefly where, like, Wash dies, and then they continue on in the comics where Zoe was pregnant. So, which is coincidental because Zoe is the same actress that plays Ketsu, who's also in this series finale. But anyways, so, I don't know. As soon as they were like, Jason Sandula, And I was like, oh, why is this a thing? This does not need to be a thing. But then again, I keep expecting to see some little green-haired person running around in some future, like, Star Wars thing. Like, who knows? If we see a green-haired kid in Mandalorian, we'll know why. I just got, like, a hair in my eye. I'm sorry. Um, so we get that. And then, of course, Sabine and Ahsoka want to go find Ezra. It's actually kind of sweet that they want to find him, and it kind of gives some closure to the character. The rumor is they are currently making, like, an entire sequel series to this about Ahsoka and Sabine looking for Ezra. I don't know. And you got to remember, when this show was coming out, they were still doing the sequel movies. And there was a lot of talk that Ezra was going to show up as the live-action character. But he never did. So... I don't know. I think it would be interesting to see what happened. I would love to see a, most of these characters in a live action form some way or another, because I think these characters were really underrated. I really did like them. I thought they were had great potential and I did really enjoy them. So I'm kind of curious what you guys think of the series overall. What did you think of just series four, season four? What did you think of just the se season four slash series finale? I'm really curious what you guys think of Hera specifically, because out of all of these characters, Hera has kind of crossed the most. I mean, we'll see Hera again in the Freemaker adventures. We see Hera in the, with Han Solo in the Forces of Destiny. She's in some video games now. Like, Hera is everywhere. So, kind of curious what you guys think. Go ahead, let me know, and I will see you guys next time.